Hi, I'm Laura Manick, Master Sommelier and owner of Cork Buzz Wine Studio. Today we're talking about an unlikely pair, and it's our first installment, and we're looking at seafood from a different perspective. Um, so I'm lucky enough to be joined by my best friend and owner of uh, Crayfish Bar, Brian Owens. Hi, Brian. It's great to be here, Laura. Thank you very much. So um, what, what dish did you bring? This looks amazing and delicious. Tell me about this dish. So this just hit the menu probably maybe about a week ago, so it's a real spring seasonal dish. You have your um, diver sea scallops out of Montauk um, on top of a bed of vegetables. You have the fiddlehead ferns, which are in season right now. Mm -hmm. They're just crunchy and, and delicious. You have your spring onion, and at the bottom you have a uh, champagne, uh, tomato champagne vinegar. Oh wow, that's exciting. So this dish is like, would you consider this a light body dish, a richer dish, a medium dish? Because I, you know, I have to think about all these things when I'm doing the wine pairing. So if you look at scallops itself, it's mm -hmm. usually very delicate, mm -hmm. uh, not full flavored, mm -hmm. but we hard sear it, which gives, you know, really ups the uh, flavor profile. And what would give it more of a complexity and a full flavor is um, the spring onion oil that we drizzle on top. Mm -hmm. And then the champagne vinaigrette really gives that acidity, which gives it a nice burst. Yeah, so, you know, I always think of, and I think a lot of people always think of seafood with, you know, just simple white wines like Chablis and Muscadet. And, you know, I like those wines, and I think we could easily do that. But I think this dish is so complex and there's so much going on. It really like demands something more than just like, you know, that average Pinot Grigio or like, you know, citrusy Chablis. So what do you have up your sleeve? Okay, so one of my favorite rosés is um, a rosé from Provence. And it's, um, it's from this crazy local grape called Tiburon. And um, it doesn't grow anywhere else in the world for the most part. And this producer really resurrected the grape. And I love the color, kind of like, not that colors matter, we're not matching wine with color, but it definitely has a little bit more than an, a white and maybe not as full flavor as a red. Um, so, but talking about tomatoes, like there's a lot of like tomato water and, and, and bright acidity in this wine, even though it's from the south of France. And so I think, you know, it's gonna be perfect with the fiddlehead ferns and also like with that hard sear that you were talking about, it has like a little bit more texture. Because the texture is like a scallop, so yeah. it's really fun. Let's try it. Take a sip. Mm. It's really good on its own. Let's see what, what goes on with this. I just saw these little heads. Spring onion there. Yeah, you have to. It's like the onions are sweeter when they're in, like during spring, so I feel like you can do something from the south of France that has like a lot of ripe fruit. And even that. you know the scallop is delicate, but it still has mm. that sweetness and butter taste to it. Oh my god, so good! It's really really good. It's so crisp and like clean, but like so rich. I think this is the perfect wine for it, to be honest. I think I found my new um, wine by the glass. <laughs> good. That's really good. You know what? I have a dish, I have a wine that I'm going to use from, from my dish that I brought up. We should try like just with the scallops. I don't necessarily think people think of red wine and, and, and shellfish, but I think with big intense dishes you can consider a red wine as well. So Especially shellfish. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll talk about that wine in a minute, but it might be fun to just try it with a Hungarian paprika that you put on top. There's a little bit of spice from the oak in red wine, and so sometimes that mimics like the paprika. So I think this will be a nice pairing too. We should try. Let's try. I still think the rosé is a little bit better, but I think people would be surprised, and it's like unlikely to think of this like really delicate, freshly caught Montauk sea scallop with the red wine. And, and it's nice for people to be able to to think about red wine and shellfish, maybe even with a little chill. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really good. Okay, so, pork buzz. You know, our little Mediterranean-inspired um, small plates, we always do like these shareable small plates, I think you know. Um, today I brought octopus, which is olive oil braised, so it has a lot of richness because we're braising it in olive oil. And then we have um, a little bit of um, uh, chickpea panisse, which is kind of like chickpea and olive, um, a, a, a yogurt tahini, and then as well, just like fresh basil. So it's just like this Mediterranean inspired dish. And you know what? I tried this so many times with like every white wine I could think of. Chablis, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. I even tried it with this rosé and I was really? like, okay. But the wine, the best pairing was New World red wine. 
So I brought today one of my really good buddies. He makes wine in Mendocino County, just north of Napa and Sonoma. And the wine is called Lioco. But the grape is a, a Mediterranean grape. It's called Carignan. So it's like this crazy, um, you know, old vine, Carignan, like 45-year-old vine. So the really concentrated fruit. And California sunshine makes it just like sun-kissed wine. So with this onion and pepper that I put, um, when we cook it, we like make it almost sweet. So you have this ripeness of the California sunshine fruit, and then this kind of sweet onion and pepper, almost like, not, it's not a marmalade, but it, it has that like cooked down flavor. That's really good. I'm gonna pour a little more. And also carignan has like a little bit of olive flavor, so it goes really well with this dish too. It's funny how seafood can be like almost so rich, it tastes like meat, you know? Again. Yeah, you have to get some of the yogurt for like the tang that just freshens everything up. That's good. You really got the tahini and mm -hmm. the smokiness. And also, yeah, the smokiness is why you need a red wine. Because most red wines are aged a least, at least a little bit in oak barrels, and oak barrels give smokiness to a wine. So, you know, light white wines are not going to have that smoky flavor that we get from the plancha after we grill it, after it's been braised. It's a great pairing. Mm -hmm. People are blown away at Cork Buzz. They're like, just automatically assume, like, oh, white wine. And then you give them this, and it's like, it's very much like an unlikely pair. Yeah. Oh, Brian, I want to do some like quick fire food and wine pairings. So let's talk about other dishes. These are obviously a little bit on the richer side. Let's talk about shellfish pairings, like seafood pairings, whatever comes to mind. You have a lot of great... So we have a huge row bar, about 16 to 20 different oysters mm -hmm. at any given time. East Coast, West Coast, sometimes from New Zealand. Um, wow. So let's just say one of my favorite East Coast, Island Creek, I'm Massachusetts, really some nice upfront salinity. Um, you know, really just fresh out of the water, uh, East Coast oyster. Okay, what so what, what am I going to pair with it? Well, I mean, I love muscadet and oysters. I mean, you know, so again, we're talking about light, briny, white wine. So I like muscadet because it's just like almost taking like um, lime and salt and, and, um, and oysters and it, putting it into a Venice form. So I think East Coast oysters, muscadet works. Okay. All right. How about, let's think about the complete opposite. Okay. West Coast, Shigoku, Shibumi, creamy, you know, really delicate, beautiful West Coast oyster. What would you say? So that's like creamy, rich, so we want a little bit like of a richer wine. I love this grape called Roussan. It's really nice. It's from the south of France, and like they grow it in Chateau de Pop. And it's creamy, but it still can be like really nice and briny. So in this case, I would do Roussan grape but from Savoie, so like the okay. northeast France. So there's like this cool little town, not a lot of people know about it, but it's called Chigny and Bergeron, and, and it would be perfect with those West Coast oysters. Beautiful. <laughs> How about, let me think, crayfish bar we're known for a lobster curry. Okay. Thai curry, chuchi curry, okay. with um, two different types of eggplant, Japanese eggplant and a Thai apple eggplant, okay. with a fresh bamboo shoe. Wow, you're putting me on the spot. So, really, so, you know, scale one to ten, about an eight on um, you know, on fire. Okay. So with the spice, you need like a teeny bit of sweetness, but curry and like lobster, we're talking of like rich, heavy. So I'm doing all sauce all the way. Like, there's not a single other wine region in the world that I can think of. So I'll do like Pinot Gris, same grape as Pinot Grigio, but like all sauce with like a couple degrees of residual sugar. And so it's like. A little bit sweet to cut through the spice, but you still have like oily, good texture. So yeah, all sauce Pinot Gris. Great. Mm -hmm. One more. Okay, one more. In season right now, um, soft shell crab. Woo! So soft shell crab with the Thai tempura, um, a local rhubarb romesco. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that? So nothing is better than anything fried with champagne, and we're talking of like you say that. <laughs> I have to, right? Um, but rhubarb is like red fruit, so you want like a rosé champagne. So you have this like soft shell crab that's in season, it's crispy and fried, and then you get like this like bubbles and, and you know, so rosé champagne all the way. Beautiful. Okay, cool. You approve? Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> uh, what did we find out today? 
I think we both agree that you know rules are really meant to be broken, mm -hmm. and sure. you know whether you're having something as delicate as a sea scallop or an oyster fresh out of the water, you're having something as complex as a lobster curry um, with a lot of heat. I think that you have to always just drink what you like and enjoy it and have a great time while you're doing it. I agree. Yeah, I think it, you know food and wine is supposed to be fun, and like as long as you're having fun, you're drinking what you like. It's the most important. These thing. are just guidelines, right? People Absolutely. just like follow along and, and learn a little bit. Okay, cool.